Everywhere you look, every new feature announcement seems in some way or another to be about providing AI models with better context. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. I am on record saying that I think that the two big themes for AI heading into 2026 are context and ROI. And with a set of announcements this week, you'd almost think that these companies were trying to front run the entire side of that context theme by getting a whole new set of features into place. In fact, there's so much going on that even stalwarts like Professor Ethan Mollick are having trouble keeping up. On Thursday, he tweeted, Lots of scattered AI announcements in the past couple of days that are pretty valuable for business use cases from Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic around memory, business context, and teamwork with AI. Real issues. Now, I just need time to try some of them out myself. First up, we have Anthropic's Claude getting a memory upgrade. Memory is the absolute Achilles heel when it comes to productive LLM use. If you have spent time having to reintroduce your LLM to a whole slew of context or background about a particular issue that is relevant for the prompt that you're trying to give it, you'll know just what a pain this is. You also might have experienced that challenge where you thought that it had all of the background context, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just behaves as though it has forgotten everything. And yet still, one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason, that I have stuck pretty closely to ChatGPT as my main tool, even though I use all of the popular chatbots at various points, is that it has a better set of memory and context around my work. Well, now with this new upgrade, Claude is getting its own version of memory. This first became available to team and enterprise users in September, but is now rolling out to paid subscribers more broadly. And the simple idea is to give Claude access to previous conversations so that you don't have to do all of that sort of background and reminding every single time. Now, Anthropic says that they're trying to be extremely transparent around how memory works. The new features allow users to both search and reference chats, as well as to generate memories from chat history. When it does that memory generation, it gives people the ability to see what things Claude actually remembers. It provides a memory summary, is transparent about which chats it comes from, and also tries to give you more controls around turning memories off. The Verge writes, you could tell Claude to focus on specific memories or, quote, forget an old job entirely. They're also effectively trying to create distinct memory spaces or project-based memory organization so that the memory itself can be organized into different buckets. Now, this is a real issue right now. I've called it in the past context confusion. And where I see it most acutely in my interaction with ChatGPT is that it has a hard time understanding where AI Daily Brief as a business begins and ends as opposed to super intelligent which, although related via me, are two separate things with different revenue streams, different goals, different players involved. And so I'm excited to see if Anthropic's approach to this can actually help solve for that sort of context confusion issue. They're also allowing people to import memories from other platforms like ChatGPT and Gemini and export memories from Claude so that there isn't memory lock-in. Most people are just straight up excited about this, although Ruin Dong does note that one of the potentially negative things that comes with increased memory is the expansion of what personal data people are comfortable giving their AI. She writes, People's tolerance for AI storing their data keeps growing because for users, it's usability. Just like in the mobile era, we once feared apps knowing too much and exposing us too easily, then we started worrying about not being seen enough. The wheel of history turns again. Now, speaking of history, we also recently talked about a new feature from Anthropic called Skills. Skills are basically a way to create little packages of context that the Claude models can call on when they make sense. And it's a way to both improve the context that Claude has access to, as well as improve the efficiency of the model, because they can use a less sophisticated model to figure out which of those skills they should be drawing upon for a particular query or prompt, and then only deploy the real aggressive use of tokens when they're in that right skills context. Well, as Alex Albert, who is Anthropic's big Claude hype man on Twitter, points out with this chart, GitHub stars for Anthropic skills are growing at a much faster rate initially even than MCP. Now, real ones might remember that MCP, while it was initially interesting to people, took a few months to really hit its inflection point around March of this year, and then had that sort of parabolic growth curve. Skills, though, at least so far, has been just straight up and to the right. Next up, we move to OpenAI, who has announced a direct business context feature called Company Knowledge. OpenAI CEO of Applications, Fiji Simo, writes, It brings all the context from your apps, Slack, Google Drive, GitHub, etc., together in ChatGPT, so you can get answers that are specific to your business. Company knowledge is basically exactly what it sounds like. The idea is that a huge amount of the relevant context for a particular business lives inside the documents and history of the other applications that that business uses. Think conversations in Slack, planning documents in Google Docs, contacts in HubSpot, you name it. 
Company knowledge is a more simplified user experience that gives enterprise users access to all of that information. In the announcement post, they write, ChatGPT can help with almost any question, but the context you need to get work done often lives in your internal tools, docs, files, messages, emails, tickets, and project trackers. Those tools don't always connect to each other, and the most accurate answer is often spread across them. With company knowledge, the information in your connected apps, like Slack, SharePoint, Google Drive, and GitHub, becomes more useful and accessible. For example, if you have an upcoming client call, ChatGPT can create a briefing for you based on recent messages from your account channel in Slack, key details from emails with your client, and the last call notes in Google Docs, and any escalations from intercom support tickets since your last meeting. Now, this is one of those absolutely duh features that is just totally essential and completely game-changing for enterprise users. This sort of enterprise search is so valuable that companies like Glean have built a nine-figure revenue business around just this core feature. If you're using a version of ChatGPT that has company knowledge enabled, under the Ask Anything bar, there should be a little button that says Company Knowledge, and when you click it, it gives you the ability to add all of the connected apps that you use at work. As it's working and drawing upon those sources, it shares its chain of thought so you can follow along and see what's happening. And importantly, it provides citations of the sources it used to inform its responses, along with the specific snippets that it drew from, giving you the ability to dive deeper into that original source to both double check the work or to go deeper on some particular question. Now, it seems like the search model that they're using is pretty sophisticated, at least in terms of how they're describing it. They claim that it's smart enough to understand conflicting details and can run multiple searches to resolve those details. It can also provide comprehensive responses that don't just rely on one source. In other words, it's not necessarily optimized to just find the fastest answer. It's got a prerogative around comprehensiveness, and it even has the ability to rank sources by recency and quality, making it so that you don't necessarily have to specify time or dates for it to get you the most relevant and recent information. Now, of course, they also give a whole bunch of provisos and guarantees around privacy. And one interesting note is that when the company knowledge feature is turned on, ChatGPT does not have access to search the web or to create charts and images. You can manually turn it off midstream and continue working in the same conversation to use those capabilities, and it doesn't lose that existing context, but right now they're separate features. The reason for that, as Andrew, who's the AI ops lead at Berkshire Gray points out, is that it's actually powered by a new model. Andrew writes, quietest agent release I've seen. What he's referring to is this. It's powered by a version of GPT-5 that's trained to look across multiple sources to give more comprehensive and accurate answers. In other words, this is a version of GPT-5 that is optimized for this particular use case. I imagine that this is going to be an extremely unlocking feature for a huge number of enterprise users. Certainly the people at OpenAI who are using it are already reporting positive results, and I would expect this to become completely de rigueur and a huge competitive advantage for ChatGPT's enterprise version. One other interesting OpenAI announcement. On Thursday of this week, the company also announced that it had bought the bombastically named Software Applications, Inc., which is the two-year-old AI startup behind Sky, which they describe as a powerful natural language interface for the Mac. From the blog post, with Sky, AI works alongside you, whether you're writing, planning, coding, or managing your day. Sky understands what's on your screen and can take action using your apps. You'll remember when we talked about the AI browser that the two prospective value propositions of that are, on the one hand, agent mode and the ability for the browser to actually do things for you, but that my feeling about that set of benefits is that they are kind of locked in for the future as opposed to something that's going to be super relevant right now, whereas the immediate benefit is the ability to use your chatbot with the context of what's on your screen. Instead of having to drag a tweet that you're drafting over into ChatGPT, if you've got the sidebar pulled up on the window, it can just see what you're drafting, which is a reduction in the cognitive load that comes with context switching. Sky is something similar to that, but instead of it being a browser, it's your entire operating system that they have the context of. A video shows someone grabbing a message from iMessage and dragging it into the Sky window, and that being able to unlock a whole set of next steps, including putting it on a calendar, really making this an operating system parallel to the context benefits of the AI browser. Most people were just absolutely gobsmacked that Apple had let this team, who's so deeply integrated into the Mac operating system, go to OpenAI. Finally, on this theme of context getting an upgrade, we have the fall announcements for Microsoft Copilot. Now, they set this up as a broad release with a bunch of different pieces. And while Microsoft AI CEO Mustafa Suleiman said that the announcements all boil down to the one core idea of them betting on humanist AI, I think that the subtext is all about context. So there are a couple of different ways that this is manifest. One interesting one is copilot groups. Copilot groups are kind of exactly what you would imagine. 
If you are using Copilot to plan or brainstorm or iterate on something that involves a group, maybe you're planning a trip with friends or you're thinking through a problem with classmates, Groups allows any particular Copilot conversation to become a group thread. The friend trip planning example was the one they gave in their demo video. After getting the conversation started, a link populated that the prompter could use to invite a set of their friends to all be part of the conversation. Now, this is obviously quite valuable for that use case, but I kind of imagine this being the type of feature that quickly becomes table stakes across all of the different tools. I just think that there are enough times when you want to be actively engaging with other people, particularly in the work context, where it's going to be more valuable to bring them into the conversation early as opposed to just sharing a link to the conversation later. One of the things that happens at Super Intelligent all the time is one of us will have some extended thread with one of the tools and then have to catch people up by using the link to that conversation that they then have to go back through and read and try to grok. This way just seems much more efficient and again reduces context switching. They also explicitly added what they call deeper memory and shared context. In their announcement blog, they write, Copilot now has long-term memory, helping you keep track of your thoughts and to-do list almost like a second brain. With memory and personalization, you can ask Copilot to remember important information like training for a marathon or an anniversary, then recall it during future interactions. We're also beginning to roll out the ability to reference explicitly past conversations, making it easier to pick up where you left off after some time has passed. Then, hearkening to the company knowledge features that we were just discussing, they're also adding connectors. With connectors, you can link Copilot to OneDrive, Outlook, Gmail, Google Drive, Calendar, etc., and bring all of that context into your Copilot conversations. Microsoft, of course, also got its own version of an AI browser, with them explicitly saying that Copilot mode in Edge is evolving into a full AI browser. We've already extensively covered the context implications of that, and they're also using their integration with the Windows operating system to, as they put it, turn every Windows 11 PC into an AI PC. Of course, for many, there's no bigger news from this Microsoft announcement of the return of Clippy, who is this time named Miko. But for me, as you can tell, this announcement is all just about making AI work better by giving it more information about the person who's piloting it. I think we are going to see more and more efforts around memory, long-term context, understanding. But there is no doubt that after this week, context has gotten a big upgrade. For now, that's going to do it for the AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.